Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. We just finished a six-part video series putting a variable frequency drive into this Grizzly Geo602 lathe. And before I use it for a project, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, tuning the VFD to see how fast I can get the spindle to start and stop. I wasn't planning on making a video for this, but as I started fiddling with it and reading through the manual, I realized there might be other people interested in this process as well. So I'll go ahead and roll some cameras on it. And if this turns into a video, I'll post it. Uh, otherwise, you won't be seeing this. Um, right now I've got the three jaw chuck on here and this is actually the lightest chuck that I have for this lathe. My four jaw is bigger and quite a bit heavier. So in order to do the tuning and have it actually be useful, I'm going to go ahead and put the heavier four jaw chuck on here and mount a piece of stock in it that's typical of the work that I do. And then I'll move some cameras around and bring you back and, and we'll spend some time trying to tune this and see how fast we can get the spindle to start and stop. Okay, got the four jaw chuck set up in the lathe and I got just a piece of, it's about 12 inches of uh, one inch uh, 1018 steel in here. This is a typical kind of piece that I turn, give it some mass. I've got the uh, variable frequency drive and we set it here to 60 hertz, which will be kind of normal, 100% speed on the motor. And then let's take a look at what I have set for the acceleration and deceleration times. Okay, according to the manual, the acceleration and deceleration are 0014 and 0015. Okay, 0014, three seconds, and 0015, also set to three seconds. Now, the interesting thing as we're accelerating and decelerating this thing is to watch the DC voltage on the VFD. So let me just set the mode so we can see that. So that's the voltage on the DC bus, the VFD, 338 volts. And let me just pop this into forward and then let it come to a stop. So it'll be a three second acceleration and a three second deceleration. And let's see how that works. So the acceleration was nice and easy. Let me decelerate. Also at three seconds, nice and easy. Let's see if we can accelerate faster. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, 14, let's take this down to, let's take it down to two seconds and see how that works. Again, that was, that was no problem at all. See if we can go further. What if we go down to one second? Whoops. Okay, that was pretty fast. In fact, that is way faster than this lathe was able to accomplish with the original motor that was in this thing. I mean, that thing took several seconds. I don't know if I'll be able to find a clip, but um, you can look at previous videos. It took several seconds to ramp up, and this is going up in one second. I'm tempted to push it further. Let's see what it'll do. Uh, before we do that, let's look at the current. So that's 338 volts. We'll see how many amps that's pushing. I was just over three amps if I read that correctly. That was almost four amps. So during the acceleration, we're definitely pushing it pretty hard we're pushing it up past the rating of the motor into the overload capacity. So I think that's probably about as far as I want to go. Let's look at the deceleration and see what we can do there. So that's going to be, if I can push the right buttons, 0015. That's three seconds. Let's take it down to two seconds. Oops. Oops. 
And again, watch the voltage, because on deceleration, what's happening is the drive is over, or excuse me, the motor ends up overhauling the drive because you have all the rotational energy in the chuck and that is going back into the motor and feeding back into the VFD. This VFD has an internal braking transistor. It does not have an external braking resistor, so it doesn't have a lot of capacity to dissipate that. Um, so it's just going to dissipate it with a transistor into the heat sink. And so there's a limit to how much energy it can absorb coming back in. So by lowering this to two seconds, it's going to be driving the voltage on the DC bus up. Now, right now we're looking at a voltage of about 338. I believe the ultimate cutout is around 380, where it'll just cut the load loose and let it, uh, let it spin down on its own. So let's go ahead and spin it up and then turn it off and let it spin down, see if it can bring it down in two seconds. We can watch the voltage here. And it looks like the voltage was climbing and we just hit the over voltage cutoff. And it was largely slowed before that happened, but we definitely hit the cutoff. So let me reset and watch again, just see how close that really is. Yeah, it's definitely hitting that 380 pretty quick. So let's um, lengthen this out slightly. Another half second, what will that do? Well, that seems to work. That gets us up there, still gets it stopped. Two and a half seconds, try it reverse. I can live with that. Uh, let's see, let's torture test this thing. Take this all the way up to 120 hertz. Got the knob turned all the way around. Let's go into uh, full reverse and then we'll reverse it and go full forward. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm totally happy with that. Now you, you could hear a little bit as it was coming up to speed in reverse. It wasn't quite getting there. So I think that one second is a little bit too aggressive. Let me lengthen that to a second and a half. Again, we're talking about a half second here. Let's see how that fares again, all the way up at 120. You know, to be honest, I'm not sure I noticed that much difference. I think the one second might be just fine. Let's try 1.2. I'll watch the current this time into reverse. hit the over voltage cut off. Okay, and it won't reset. Let me, uh, oh, it's because I'm still in forward. There we go. Okay, well, um, I think I need to lengthen that just slightly and I'll fiddle around with this a little bit and then bring you back. Okay, I've been playing with this a little bit and what I've ultimately settled on, I think, just to keep this in the safe mode so that I'm not you know, messing around with it and struggling as I work, is I've got the acceleration time set to one second, which is fine, it's one second to 60 hertz or two seconds to 120. And then I have the deceleration time 
set to four seconds. And when you've got this much moving out here, it, it just, it generates a lot of energy that goes back into the drive. And this drive doesn't have an external braking resistor, so it's just got no place to dump that. So when, if, when I have it set to this, if I'm running at around, if I'm running at 60 hertz, um, hang on. So if I'm running at 60 hertz, this thing will come up in one second and then it'll break down in four. And I think that's just gonna be fine. So here's going to reverse. And then switching to forward. Four seconds, and then one second up, and four seconds to stop. And you can see if I show the voltage here, uh, it's, it's handling this easily. Switching off. That's probably the highest spike I've seen. Let's do it one more time. Yep, I'm staying well under the one, well, maybe not well under, but definitely staying under the uh, 380 volts. And so I think this is gonna work. I have spent a little bit of time playing around. There's a bunch of other settings on this VFD. Um, if you get into this and, and look through the manual, there are, there's something called uh, regeneration prevention, and you can set uh, voltage levels at which, you know, like when it's decelerating or when it's overhauling, it'll go ahead and bump the frequency up a little bit. And I played with that, and it, it just isn't really giving me what I want. Um, I, I, you know, it, it ends up jittering, going down and, and slows down much, much slower. Tried some of the tuning, couldn't really get anywhere with that. There's also some settings in here to be able to change the uh, the braking transistor on level. Right now it's set so the braking transistor comes on at 380 and shuts off at 340. Let's play with that and see if we can lower that a little bit. So that's 0320. three not the most usable user interface ever and that's set at 380 and you can see we were touching up against 380 during the braking so let me go ahead and lower that to maybe 360 so the braking transistor will turn on at that level and let's see what that does and again we're still sitting at 60 Hertz so going forward and shutting off. It doesn't appear to have made much difference. Um, let's see if we can lower the frequency at all now. Or lower the time. Okay, we're set to four seconds. Let's bring it back down to three. Watch the voltage. No, it really doesn't help. I think we're kind of at the limit of what that resistor, what that transistor can do to dump this. So set it back. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set this back up to the factory default. And yeah, maybe I'll leave it at 370. Okay, and let's just do one last test. Let's take the frequency all the way up to 120 Hertz. Let's watch the voltage, run it all the way up in reverse. Switch to forward.
And off. Okay. I think I can live with that. Uh, there are some other things that could be done, I, but I think this is about as fast as we're gonna get it to stop with this VFD. Uh, so I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Well, I hope at least some of you found that interesting or useful. As I said, I was gonna be doing the tuning anyway, and I figured I might as well roll the cameras. That's all I've got for today. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.